Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Eating While Broke. I'm your host, Colleen Witt, and today we have very special guests. Lex and Drea from Poor Minds is in the building. Hey y'all. Hey. I'm excited. Me too. I'm <laughs> really excited to have you both, and I'm more excited about what I'm about to eat. Mm -hmm. So what are you about to cook up? Okay, so today we're gonna be making some row tail dip, yes. which I feel like is like a staple in black families. It is. It, it really is. is. Like we make it for the baby showers, football games, football games birthday parties, yep. everything growing up. My mom used to always make this, my aunts, my uncles. It was at every family gathering. Yes. Okay, I've actually never had the row tail dip. Really? So I'm really excited. I saw a bunch of cheese and gooey stuff uh -huh. and I was happy I was happy I'm with it so what are all the ingredients in the Rotel dip so Rotel is um a, it's a cheese dip mm -hmm. essentially so you gotta have your Velveeta cheese mm -hmm. you got your cream cheese we have Italian sausage you can use any kind of meat that you want if mm -hmm. you want to use ground beef but mm -hmm. we use Italian sausage. and it's the turkey Italian sausage turkey Italian sausage mm -hmm. so we have um onions you know whatever kind of dressings you like so mm -hmm. kind of look at it as like a fancy kind of taco dip mm -hmm. okay so you really can throw whatever you want personally right. in there this is just what we like in ours yeah okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I like to use a few different cheeses some people just like to use just Velveeta by itself oh, yeah, but Velveeta. I have cream cheese Velveeta and pepper jack cheese okay okay so we got a lot of flavor mm -hmm. and a lot of gooeyness going on mm -hmm. yes okay So I'm curious because you had the you have the onions and then the was that like a baby I don't know what that green pepper is called oh a jalapeno a jalapeno mm -hmm, a fresh jalapeno and then you have these what are these green ones green chilies green chilies mm -hmm. and the tomato and then that's tomatoes okay yep. are you cooking all of those ingredients yes okay, okay well I'm gonna cook I'm gonna actually like kind of well I don't know I'm probably not gonna saute it actually but I'm just gonna put it all in once the cheese is melted okay okay mm -hmm. I'm excited. So get to get to cooking. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's get started. Cooking. Let's get started. And we st let's I'm starving. Up. I didn't even breakfast or nothing. Okay. okay? This so. going to be a good little lunch. It yes. is. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cook the meat first. So let me go ahead and turn this on. Okay. Let's oh, man, I, I played y'all because usually I try to preheat the... Uh, heaters before you guys start so it's all oh, no, it's nice okay. they're getting the authentic mm -hmm. the whole process so, you know people be in the comments asking every little thing well what did you put this on what did you right. put this on so now y'all can see they gonna see it step mm -hmm. by step it's on medium heat y'all yes. <laughs> so do we have any like butter or oil yeah, we, or cooking spray you know what the most i have is that butter back oh, okay this will work it's so funny because I saw it and I said they don't need butter. <laughs> a little bit, just a little. We from the south. We put we want the fattiest, fattiest yeah, that's in not, everything. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I live and die by butter. I go through like a stick every two days. Really? It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Did you ever go through a phase where you ate butter? My two year old is actively using butter like it's a Snickers. Bar. Really? <laughs> she'll like come in the kitchen. She'd be like butter. She dips her little fingers in it. She'll bite it like it's that's a candy crazy. Bar. And then I'll see her and I'll have this face of like, Ugh, <laughs> and then she'll look at me like. When I was, <laughs> when I was younger, I got really, really sick one day. And my mom and my sister, they were so confused on why I was sick. And then my mom went to the sink and she saw, because I used to eat butter and rice together. You did? Yes. Ew. And I had put like a whole <laughs> stick of butter. And I was so sick. And she went to the sink and saw this bowl and it just had butter this thick caked on the bottom she's like that's why your ass sick mm -hmm. you could get sick from it i, need <laughs> I mean i guess because i ate so oh, much in yeah. one sitting yeah like okay. i just i was not feeling good mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie i'm one of those parents like i give in to everything my daughter does so when she's like screaming for butter i'm mm -hmm. like you know what just hand it to her i'm like you ain't eating nothing else <laughs> so but i never let my friends hear that because my friends be always checking my parents and like yo she running you and i'll be I like so weak. i'll be Handing your baby a stick of butter is crazy. Hey, I, 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 sometimes, sometimes I gotta she do what I gotta whatever do. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Yeah. 
<laughs> but I do it in <laughs> silence. I've never confessed that to anyone. I'm sure like the, <laughs> so you the walk child around police. with a stick of butter in your purse just in case yeah. you want one. I should. Outside. I really should. <laughs> I should. I'm a, <laughs> you know. Nah, but I'll let her. I'll let her. I'll let her take off a little piece of butter or a little whatever's left. You know, but. In my mind, you know, one of my other homegirls said this. I'm like, look, man, Z don't eat nothing. At this point, if she wants donuts for breakfast, I'm with it. Right. Like, a calorie is a calorie uh-huh. at this point. Because it's better than her not having not nothing. Not anything, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I understand that. So, I was a very picky eater as a child, so I totally understand. But this is one of the things that I love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was I was a skinny mini person, mm-hmm. and I feel like this is God's way of punishing me. Like all the, <laughs> yeah. all the taxes my mom chose to try to get us to gain weight, and now I get to experience like what it's like to watch your kid never eat. Yeah, but That's take sweet. me back to what was going on in the era of Rotel Dip. Okay, so like I don't know, I was a child, and we just used to always. My family was really big on family gatherings, mm-hmm. and so like I said, we just used to always have this at every family get together. So it's kind of like one of those nostalgic things for mm-hmm. me. But then also when I got to college and I was kind of struggling and didn't really have any money, it was just a quick, simple meal that you can make for like under twenty dollars, mm-hmm. and it's a great mm-hmm. it's a great and it lasts meal. for days it, it lasts for days yeah, yeah. You like if you make it for a like two three enough. days yeah for sure really and uh-huh. i think for me like growing up in the south like we love cooking mm-hmm. and i think this is like one of the first meals you kind of learn how to cook as a kid because it's easy to put together mm-hmm. like you learn how to brown meat when you like five yeah <laughs> <laughs> So I think this is one of the like the first things I really learned how to cook because it's just like all you gotta do is brown the meat, melt yep. the cheese, and add everything you want in it. So that's what I remember. I remember this was like one of the first things I learned how to cook. Yeah, it's really simple. Mm-hmm. Really I, easy. I, I feel would, like you can't miss it up. Yeah, like it's one no, of those. It's full. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. So you guys were in college to start at college, I guess. Then, so you're in college. Not you guys knew each other, didn't know each other then. No, we hadn't met yet. Yeah, we hadn't met yet. Yeah, so I was actually in college in this small town in Texas because I'm from Houston, Mm -hmm. but I went to school in Nacogdoches. It's Mm -hmm. like two hours away from Houston. Mm -hmm. And like I was working at Lowe's and I was getting paid like a little money. I thought I was really doing something. Mm -hmm. But me and my friend, we actually, between the two of us, because she had a job, she was working at this department store called Bilks. I was working at Lowe's and we had food stamps. (laughs) So like the actual food stamps before it became a card no it was a card they had the card back then because this was like 2011 okay so yeah so we both had food stamps i think we was getting like 200 dollars a piece a month and we just used to go to the grocery store and rack up on everything and this was one of my favorite things to cook and i used to invite my friends over and i would always make them this and like this pasta dish that was like really cheap to make that I used to use Velveeta in too. Velveeta was my thing. Yeah, Velveeta can be used for a lot of things. You really can use it for a lot of things. And I don't think it's real cheese, right? Because I, it's, it's, I don't it's think not, it's, I don't think it's it not Cause you, yeah. 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 I learned that the hard way after being on this show, looking for Velveeta cheese in the refrigerated department. Yeah, like, that's no, one thing it's like. Can't be cheap. And Velveeta really don't get cold. If Which you know, is concerning. That, you know what I'm saying? Oh you put it in the freezer, it'll come out, it's still no not cold. Way. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. It really won't. No way. It's like certain things like that you have to question. Just like how Hawaiian punch never gets cold. Mm-hmm. That's how mm-hmm. Velveeta is. Yeah, it's one of them it's... things like that. Hawaiian punch doesn't get cold. Man, either. that no. Get the freak out. I didn't no, know that. I'm telling you, it don't get cold. It's just it too don't. thick. It don't. Velveeta, I mean, but you don't Hawaiian question it because it gets the job thing. done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. See, I grew up a little I'm um, a season, it's a little big. So you put the garlic powder so i'm gonna use garlic powder i'm gonna use some ground paprika some onion powder a little lorries yeah. and some black pepper and the good thing about italian using italian sausages too is it's already seasoned pretty yeah. well so mm-hmm. you don't have to add you don't too have much to in there so much. Mm-hmm. that's why i'm not really gonna use that much pretty much everything doesn't really have salt in it except for this mm-hmm. i like the italian i'll do like a kale soup which is really really good mm-hmm. and the italian sausage does yep. all the work Oh, it does. It people, really does. People be like, oh my God. And I'll be like, yeah, you know, what but can that I little, say? My little secret <laughs> ingredient. Uh-huh. I love Italian sausage because like you said, it's already really flavorful. Yeah, mm-hmm. use it in the spaghetti, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. So for me, like I grew up kind of spoiled. Mm-hmm. So whenever I got to college, I just remember this being one of my go-tos. Because that was like the first time me really experiencing being broke was like in college. Because mm-hmm. I was like 
for the first time on my own. Mm-hmm. I had to have a job and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you couldn't just call your parents and be like, hey, can I just get some bread? And they're like, no, suffer. Right. So it <laughs> was Welcome like. Welcome to being an adult. You wanted it so bad. <laughs> right. I think for me, it was more so of I had the option to call my mom, but I wanted to be independent oh, so I like bad because I, I was like, I have to prove this to myself that I can do it, mm-hmm. you know? So. I would go get my Rotel and I would really, like, you can eat on this for a good two, three days mm-hmm. for wow. sure. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I won't get tired of it either. And I'm one of those people. I don't care. I eat what I want when I want. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not breakfast food. Yeah, I'm, I'm the yeah, same way. I'm mm-hmm. the same way. First of all, I don't even like breakfast food unless I cook it. Really? Yeah. I'm really weird about it. I feel like nobody can make a lot of breakfast food like yeah. the way I like yeah. it. Except for, I w- I'm out here in Atlanta. Uh-oh. Shout out to 85 South. Uh, but I did try the Atlanta, some breakfast spot over here, and they had like the peach. Waffle oh, Atlanta with the Breakfast chicken. Club. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, oh, man, this yeah, is, it's this good. is different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, some people can't make breakfast. Yeah, we were Atlanta just, have a lot of good breakfast spots. They actually spots. have, I'll, I'll say that about Atlanta. We have some really good breakfast spots out here. Mm-hmm. Like the breakfast out here is good. I know people complain about Atlanta food a lot, but the breakfast spots out here are the breakfast A1. spots. They don't be complaining miss. about the food out here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I do too a little bit. I think if you Southern, like if you're from like <laughs> us being from Texas and then Houston specifically, like Houston really has some of the best food in America. I'm not lying. Yeah. And so moving here, I just think a lot of the food is just very underwhelming. Like we have like a lot of cute places like that. You know, it's like it's a nice little vibe yeah. and a nice aesthetic but the food is just always very underwhelming in my opinion in comparison to like what I'm used to when you say of, underwhelming like the flavors and yeah the, the flavor a lot of the menu options mm-hmm. like a lot of places that I go to the menus are very limited they don't really have that many options I think um do you guys do the hot sauce in the person yes I hate to do for that for sure <laughs> she always I love and if hot she sauce. don't have it that's the first thing she asks do y'all have any type of have- hot sauce mm-hmm. <laughs> or just sauce period like I'm a sauce girl I don't yeah. like no dry food sauce it up mm-hmm. okay okay so you guys are struggling separately in mm-hmm. college doing yes. the independent things you by by choice and you not by choice um, well, I mean, I really, I was kind of struggling a little bit, but yeah, I mean, I could have called my parents, but I think I was kind of on the same thing. Cause I grew up in a two parent household and me and my parents were really close, but I just think I was trying to like prove my independence mm-hmm. to them. Yeah. I like that for yeah. you both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do you guys end up connecting? This is like years later. Like yeah. Years later? Yeah, because we met, Lex and I met, I was like 2015. 23. It yeah. wasn't, well, it was like four years later because you said 2011. We met in 2015. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me and you met like maybe like a year or two after I graduated from college yeah. and I had just moved back to Houston. Mm-hmm. And you both finished college? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we both no graduated. No college dropouts? No college nope. dropouts. No college dropouts? No college dropouts. Oh, man. Dropout. Okay. We both graduated. <laughs> but, and we and actually have the same degree. I was about to ask that. What's the same, What's the degree? Mass but, communication. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, you guys were headed in the same direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so tell me about the meeting of y'all, the so, kindred spirit. <laughs> yeah, so we were working at a club, uh, bartending. She had never bartended before, and mm-hmm. I really knew my way around the bar. So we kind of just started hustling together. Like, we figured out something that works for her. Like, she's a very, she's more, believe it or not, she's way more social than I am. Mm-hmm. She's good at talking to people. So she would pretty much talk to the people at the bar. I was making the drinks mm-hmm. and she would be like, oh, hey, this may, I need two Long Islands, mm-hmm. uh, Incredible Hulk and this. So I was making the drinks. She was kind of talking to the guys, getting tips and mm-hmm. that's how we was making money. We so had a little okay. system and it Yeah, worked. we had a system and we was definitely cleaning up. We mm-hmm. was cleaning up I love there. how y'all got <laughs> together and instantly was like, we got this. We right. Can, we can make and this work for us. It's so funny because like us making money now together is funny because that's really how our friendship started. Yeah. Like we've always just made, money, made together. money together. Okay. Yeah, like right off top. So that's how we met. We started talking and we realized we had the same degree mm-hmm. and um that we were interested in kind of like maybe doing radio type mm-hmm. of stuff. We didn't know exactly what we were wanted you guys to do. Both from Texas too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. you had that Houston. Well, I'm from Orange. So okay. I moved to Houston in what, two thousand seven? Mm-hmm. So um I'm from a small, small town. Like okay. it's like two hours from Houston. But yeah, so once we started talking and we realized we had a lot in common the friendship just started from there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's how we met. And uh, she ended up moving to Atlanta. We stayed in contact for the whole year she was out there. And then at the time, um, the girl that she had moved out here with, they ended up going separate ways. So mm-hmm. she was like, you might as well just move out here. You're not doing nothing. I was mm-hmm. like, 
That's when I was it's real so, broke. I was <laughs> real broke. It's so funny because literally me and her were just having this conversation mm-hmm. in the kitchen before we started recording. And I literally told her exactly the same way that yeah. she just said it. Like, no. I was like, I was like, girl, you ain't doing nothing. Come out here. Girl, I wasn't yeah. doing nothing. I was literally, I was down to my last $3. So. And he was like, come on down. Come on yeah, down. I told her, I I'll like, be yeah, trying to recruit my now. best friends. They yeah. be like, no, call. I'll be like, come on, man. I literally packed my, she told me to move down there. And three weeks later, I had packed yeah. my car. She was here. And I drove to Atlanta and yep. I was like, we're going to figure it out. So I was eating a lot of Rotel my yeah. first oh year my in Atlanta. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Lots of Rotel was being made. Yeah, because we were living together for like the first six months that she lived here. Like she was staying with me at my mm-hmm. apartment. And yeah, we used to be busting down some Rotel. Yes. I, I was hilarious. living on her couch because I had a girl mm-hmm. that was supposed to move out here with me, but she mm-hmm. ended up flaking on me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the money I had saved up, I was saving up to be in a two bedroom and splitting rent with somebody. So okay. then I had to change everything and really find a one bedroom. Mm-hmm. So the month, two months I was supposed to stay there ended up turning into six months. Okay, okay. So I was really struggling. Oh, so yeah. when we would come home and make the hotel, I'd be like, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know I know for a fact I'm finna eat for three days. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen on that fourth day. So, but, I know, but I know I'm good for the I next know three days. I'm good for the next three days. <laughs> so you're out there, out here, and what are you doing for work to make money? Oh, I was bartending. Yeah, she was still bartending. Well, you're a bartender, bartender, but you're not a real bartender. She's just you, fine. You like it. Okay. Yeah, she just want, know, I was she one of the Hennessy and Coke, Coke girls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you ask me anything more than a Hennessy and Coke, that's too complicated. So how I'm did not you keep doing getting these bartending jobs? Because you knew that's where the, the money was at for you. Well, yeah, for sure. And then also, you know, moving to Atlanta, even though I had my degree, I worked in oil and gas for like two years when I first graduated from college. And it was a cool experience, but it just wasn't for me. And obviously, out here in Atlanta, oil and gas isn't as big as it is in Texas. Mm-hmm. So, and I knew I didn't want to work corporate. And bartending money was quick, it was fast, it was easy. And yeah, I really, I actually really liked it for a little while. And so I just knew if I moved out here and I didn't have anything else that I could do, I could get a bartending job quick. Cause when I moved here, I didn't have a job. Yeah. Okay. Like I just was like, I'm moving. I packed all my stuff, put it in the car, and I moved out here. And then I got a job maybe like two weeks after. Okay. And during and this did time, you let me end up going back to bartending. So yeah, so bartending for me was a little different because when I graduated from high school and I started bartending, I was like working at restaurants. Because mm-hmm. during this time, it wasn't a thing to be like a fine bartender in like 2007, 2008. Right. All that stuff kind of started happening, I'll say in like 2014, 15. Mm-hmm. So when I moved out here, I started bartending as well. So it's like I had a job where it was like a cute bartender, but like we was really bartending, yeah. like mm-hmm. making the drinks and stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I actually had two jobs. Mm-hmm. I was working the bartending job and I was working at European Wax Center. So I was like, oh, wow. literally, this one in cute yeah, I was literally um, getting off of work at European Wax Center, mm-hmm. then going to the club job Make, getting off the club job at like four o'clock in the morning, going home, rest for a few hours, and then going back to European Wax Center at like nine in the morning. Oh, shoot. So now is this because the the overhead in Atlanta was so high for you guys, or were you guys stacking for a, 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 a goal at this point? Well, this, you were doing at that a, point, we was just doing I, what was working. I was just trying to. <laughs> yeah, we was just trying to make it work yeah. because I didn't, I didn't really have no there plan at the night. time, and I think I was just oh, still oh, there trying to figure hair. out what I wanted to do oh, with my life. Yeah, this was probably. Bad. So I think bartending was just easy in the meantime, in between time mm-hmm. too, because I didn't even know what I wanted to do. Like I had the degree in mass communications, and I had tried my hand at like radio and even like red carpet events in Houston. It was so funny, but <laughs> I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so I was just kind of winging it. Yeah. Okay. And then when she moved here, that's when we ended up getting the idea from one of her exes to like start a YouTube channel. Yeah. So take me to that conversation. Um, so honestly, we started our, cause we were like, what are we gonna do? Like we have to create some kind of content together. Cause every time we were outside mm-hmm. and I get it because everybody's like, oh, people tell me that me and my friends are funny, mm-hmm. but it was crazy because me and Dre couldn't even sit at like a happy hour without somebody walking past us. Like, I'm sorry, I was listening to y'all conversation and y'all are y'all hilarious. Are hilarious. Mm-hmm. It was like, we could, I mean, we would be in Target just having conversations and people be like, I'm sorry, I was listening to y'all conversation. So we started the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So we were just like doing, we were cooking on there, doing hair tutorials. Everything. Make, we were just trying to figure out something. So my 
my ex at the time was listening to us talk. He was like, y'all need to record this. Okay. Like, this is funny. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, okay, let's try it. So we started Wind Down Wednesday, and it was just us sitting down talking. Mm -hmm. And at the time, we weren't really getting any views on anything, but yeah. we were probably getting like 20 views on all the other videos, <laughs> but Wind Down Wednesday got 100, 100 views. Okay. Yeah. So we was like, oh, we in that We thing. own the song. We, <laughs> we own got some here. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, once Wind Down Wednesday started getting a little tension, and we were super consistent. Mm -hmm. So I will say, what this is what, 2017, right? This was like, yeah, the end of 2017. So mm -hmm. from 2017 till today, we have not missed a week of dropping. Even wow. when it was Wind Down Wednesday and it changed to Poor Minds, we've dropped an episode every single week. Yeah, we haven't skipped a week. What kept you guys consistent if you weren't making money in the beginning? Whew, you know what? It was times where me and Lex would like definitely get into it because I would be like, I don't want to do this shit anymore. Because yeah. <laughs> we not making any money. Like I need to start making money. Like why are we doing this? But I don't know. I think we just always knew that we had something really good mm -hmm. and eventually people were going to catch on. And so we just thugged it out. I think more, more so for me though, I really didn't feel like I had a choice. Like, yeah. I was like, this has to be it. Yeah. I was like, cause I don't know what else I'm gonna do. And I'm like, I know this is what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, you know, at the time, like she was in a relationship with someone and he was kind of, you know, taking care of her and doing, you know, things that he had to do, but I didn't have that really. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Dre was like, look, if something don't pop off, I'm going to go be with my man. I was like, well, look, <laughs> yeah, a ring do for me. Like, I need, please don't leave me. <laughs> and also, too, the thing about that, too, even at that time, like, it's like I was definitely in a situation where I guess you could say, like, I was kind of straight financially because he was taking care of me. But then I got to a point to where I didn't like him yeah. anymore. So then it's like, I really need to make my own money now yeah, because mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with you anymore. Like, yeah. this relationship has ran its course. And I think a lot of the time women don't talk about that part part mm -hmm. of dealing with somebody who is like quote unquote taking care of you too because sometimes you don't even really like that man for right, real right, no more you right. really don't so, want to have to deal with him but you're dealing with him because of what he's doing right yeah. and I think that was your motivation as well and too. that was my motivation to really like get on my shit with this show yeah like okay. with the show yeah so you and and you guys were having a good time did you guys yeah. have any falling outs during because you've been recording <laughs> yes for, and you show up on a Wednesday what was what's, what's oh the scene God. looking like when you're beefing we weren't you talking. could tell you could tell we used to argue on the show there, the videos are, are still, still up. up what because we weren't talking at a, at this point mind you i don't have i'm broke mm -hmm. i'm literally putting ten dollars in my car just to get to her house mm -hmm. to go record so i'm already mad yeah. i'm broke <laughs> i'm mad at the world right now so and then me and her not getting along because we were just having like oh, on. um creative on. differences you know we're friends and but we're not getting along right now so we would only see each other it was about a five six month period where we were only talking on wednesdays mm -hmm. and we were only talking when we recorded we would literally yeah. record i would sit there edit the video post it and i would leave and without saying bye nope i'm I'd not like, saying right, nothing i'll see you bye. all right see you next week yeah and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. So what would bring you guys back together when those times would happen? Um, we just ended up getting to a space where we really wanted to remain friends. Because I feel like, you know, obviously a lot of the time people do shows together and have businesses together. And it's just business. Like, mm -hmm. you don't get along. But I think a big foundational thing in our relationship has always been how close we are and how much we love each other. Mm -hmm. So I think we just realized, like... Yeah, it's been hard and we've been doing what we have to do, but let's figure out how to get back in a good space with our friendship. Yeah. Cause I also think that will help the business too. And it did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that was always important to us. I think we finally realized, okay, poor my, or oh, at the time, Wind Down Wednesday is cool, but I care about you The more. friendship, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, we, I think what helped us is we always put the friendship first. Cause I'm like, if this stuff blows up, I need my sister. I don't have family in Atlanta. Yeah, you know, right. Like, it's just us. It's two. just it's really just us two. It was mm -hmm. like you know, I, if I didn't have anything or I needed something, this is my closest contact mm -hmm. that I had. So it was just like, okay, we have to figure this out. Like, yeah, you guys, but you would think that at some point you guys took some kind of break. So when I hear you guys haven't missed anything, I'm mm -hmm. like. No, girl. Even when we were like hating each other, we no. still showed you up. You would send a text like, "I'll be there at five. Yeah, on my way. <laughs> <laughs> we still did what we had to we do. We did, and it's like looking back did on any it. And I'm outside glad friends now that we did. like try to kind of get between y'all when y'all was beefing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't so much say get between us, but you know, naturally, it's like if someone is my friend and they're not really her friend, mm -hmm. and vice versa, and we're going through it, they. Like 
like, oh, you know, they have so many opinions and stuff. And they're like, well, I don't think y'all should be cool anymore. I don't like that she did that either, which is why I really feel like in a relationship and in a friendship, you got to be careful what you tell your friends yeah. and your family yeah. members if you plan on staying cool with somebody or if you plan on staying in a relationship with them because you over it, but now your friends still feel some type of way mm -hmm. about them. Still. Yeah. And then they don't want to like <laughs> go out if y'all want to do yeah. something. Yeah. They'd be like, nah, I ain't going with her. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 And I think it's like, I'm 34 now. You know, mm -hmm. we started this journey. You know, I was, when I met her, I was what, 26? Yeah. You know, 26. Like so it's like so much. I've grown into a completely different woman now. So I think on both sides, it's like she's a totally different person mm -hmm. than she was when we first met. Mm -hmm. So I definitely agree with that. There were things that should have stayed between us that mm -hmm. we were kind of like venting Telling to our, our friends, friends yeah. about, you know, that it was things that we probably should have just, you know, try to work out within mm -hmm. us. But And now we know, you know, yeah. we older, you learn, you grow. Mm -hmm. But I promise you, that's the, the theme of Atlanta this week is everyone who who's doing business together. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, let's go back to the core. Of, yeah, you, you have to. Yeah. That's the only way I feel like it will work. I mean, well, no, let me not say that because it's definitely people who, like I said, do business together and they don't really fool with each other. But for us, I felt like it was important for us to like get back yeah, to um, our friendship. Because it mean, translates on camera. Like we said, if you were to watch some of those old episodes, it's so cringy. It's so cringy. Because it was obvious we could not stand each other. Yeah. There were people in the comments like... Oh, yeah. It was a lot of... In the beginning, we actually lost a lot of listeners because they were like, I can't watch this anymore. Mm -hmm. It was like, they they were like, this is... Because all y'all are doing is yelling at each other. Y'all talking over each other. Y'all not... And it wasn't enjoyable. So mm -hmm. it's like, once we noticed, like, we knew we had something special, but we were ruining it. Right. Yeah. And it was like, okay, we got to get back to, like, having fun on camera. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody wants to tune in to drama every week. Like, this ain't, you know, love and hip-hop. Like, yeah. we're not trying to do all that. And then we saw so many people. Still to this day, we're seeing people start a podcast with their friend, and they fall out and they hate each other. Podcast is going, friendship is going, all that. So, and I don't know what it is about business that like makes people's friendship always not work out. Always. Well, that was going to be my next. Like, you guys are at almost 300 episodes. When uh -huh. did money enter the scene? Mm, like, I want to say, did we get our first check in like 2019? For, it was like an ad check and it was like $86. It was like $86. We were so happy. Was, okay, yeah, so. But not real money. But not real money. Wait, you started 2017 and it wasn't until when? Like 2019. And it was $80. And it was like $80. It was an $80 check. And we were like, okay, progress. We, <laughs> we finally something. did something. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was a, it was a, like a monetization check? It was an yeah. ad check mm -hmm. for like, we were doing ads with some ad company that ended up firing us yeah. Yeah. eventually because we weren't doing the ads right. Yeah. But yeah, they sent us an $86 check and we were like super happy about Did it. Did you yeah. guys like take a picture and post it somewhere or frame it? No, um, I don't think so. I don't even think I, I have, I don't even know where we I We should have kept it though. Yeah, <laughs> I like those have. first checks. I like try to do, a, uh, in my house I do, uh, my dad had this conversation with me and I think a lot of successful people go through this is like, you're so in the grind that you forget all the accomplishments. Mm -hmm. so my dad started having a rule like, yo, maybe you should start hanging this stuff up on yeah. your walls. Right. So in my home, I call it like the Hall of Fame. I don't put it out in the living room or anything, but right. if you go through the hallways, like if you go upstairs in mm -hmm. my house, you'll see like a lot of different things that I did over time. And that was something my dad was just like, because you're, you're losing it. Right. Like you're, mm -hmm. And Nick used to always tell me that. He'd always be like, yo, take two seconds to take it in. And yeah. I, don't, right. I bet you it's in our email somewhere. I should it's probably, probably look somewhere. Like, I'm sure yeah. I probably find it. I need it. to find it, yeah. But I saw your guys' studio. It's beautiful. It would be nice to see that in Thank that beautiful you. studio, like that first That check. first little check. I Thank know it's somewhere you. in our email. But, yeah, that was the first time we got paid. And so at that point... It was like, okay, this is possible. Mm -hmm. Like, we mm -hmm. can figure something out. So, um. Did y'all split the check? I don't even <laughs> Or did y'all just, we like, go to with lunch it. with it? I don't even remember what I, we did with yes, it at the time. I don't even know what we did with that. Because I know we didn't do much. Because we, well, we didn't have a bank account for Poor Minds yeah, at that time yeah. either. Mm -hmm. So I really don't remember what we did with it. So, mind you, at this time, too, um, we're building our youtube page as well mm -hmm. so youtube had actually changed the rules to how on how to get monetized so you had to have a certain amount of watch hours mm -hmm. and um a certain amount of subscribers you mm -hmm. have to have a thousand subscribers before you could get a check yeah and mm -hmm. like a something that crazy number of watch time mm -hmm. hours so when we finally met that threshold we were like okay so now we gotta start getting youtube checks but our youtube checks were like 
you had to reach a hundred dollars before they even pay you out. Mm -hmm. So then so, you would have to wait months sometimes before we could get the YouTube. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it was like we were making like six dollars a month on our views, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like it wasn't really anything. But and I you think, guys still kept grinding. Still. And what is your family and your friends saying at this time? Nothing. My mom was just like, girl, I don't understand why you don't go get a job because Same. you have a but, degree. But you guys were working during the, during the, uh, did I miss that? Did you, were you guys not working long? No, yeah, yeah, I was well, still Lex working. Well, Lex was, but for like a year and a half, I wasn't. Well, because, you had the, like, mm -hmm. the, the man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was still working at European Wax Center. And my mom was just like, my mom used to get on line for me and be applying jobs for me. Oh, you need to go here. You need to go here. That's cause funny. She was like, what are you doing? I like, could what see is why y'all took the prideful route. Cause mm -hmm. she was over here filling out yes, applications. She worried. Was, yes. was like, I'm gonna... <laughs> she was like, hey, there's this place that's interviewing, but it was crazy because we had a little bit of money coming in, but it wasn't enough. And I had a conversation with Dre and I was like, hey, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, if something kind of doesn't really happen in like the next six months to a year, I'm going to go back to school. She did. So I said that. I was going to go back to school to, uh, for dental hygiene. I was going to be a dental hygienist. I was like, okay. I looked up the program. I was like talking to my mom about it. I was like, okay, I knew what program I was going to apply to. So I was like at the top of the year towards like summertime, if nothing happens, like... I'm just gonna have to go back to school and. And that's how many out. years in? Like three? That's about three. Yeah, we yeah. were about three years in because I'm like, what is? Like, I'm sure your mom was a like, relieved. something gotta like, shake. Yeah, Six months, she yeah. Was like, like, she'd be like three months left. She was. <laughs> she was like, okay, girl, okay, now what's going on with y'all? And then it's like the content that we were talking about too was a lot for my mom. Like, mm -hmm. my mom was cool. Like me and my mom always had a great relationship, but she was just like, y'all. You did what? Yeah. yeah. You did who and where? She's and... like, this is stuff is gonna be on the internet forever and. I'm I'm just like okay it has a it has a purpose you know mm -hmm. like we just have to keep pushing so um but they definitely didn't see the vision they for definitely sure didn't see the first. nobody did and okay. then especially with me like i have i have always been a person who like hops from one thing to another mm -hmm. thing like i've always had an issue like staying consistent because i get bored easily now that your parents we're starting to meddle a little bit more. Did you ever hit the six month milestone? So what happened during that six month mark was we had met um, DJ Scream out here. He's mm -hmm. a very influential person like in the media space. Mm -hmm. And we had met him through a guy that we know named Kodak, shout out to Kodak. Yeah, uh, Kodak to was Kodak. somebody that we had worked um, with closely in media like he would kind of get us little bookings and every now and then just for exposure and mm -hmm. things like that he's in the podcasting world as well mm -hmm. and so he had introduced us to scream and scream was like hey i got this radio show i want y'all to do so y'all come up to the radio station like every wednesday mm -hmm. and come do the radio show with me so it was like an hour long oh nice yeah so it wasn't like it wasn't like a paid thing mm -hmm. but it was more so the exposure of course so i think once we did that everybody was like hold on like okay like mm -hmm. y'all doing something mm -hmm. and so at this point it was still called wind down wednesday mm -hmm. so when we were introduced to scream he was like you know what if you do hashtag wind down wednesday a million things pop up mm -hmm. he was like y'all have something special y'all need to change the name mm -hmm. like y'all need to make it where it's hashtag whatever y'all more say, synonymous it's gonna pop drea and lex are gonna pop right. up right so I think this is more was the, synonymous. What, what do you mean by that? Like, cause like you know, like people are gonna associate that name with us. Okay, yeah. okay. So, yeah. so, we, so we had to change Wind Down Wednesday because if you hashtag Wind Down Wednesday, right everything now, pull so up. many oh, different okay. things Got pull it. up. So I think when we met Scream, that was the first time we were like, okay, we need to come up like with a business plan. And, mm -hmm. You know, we need to see. And mind you, at this time, we have a lot of friends who are podcasters. They're going on tour. Mm -hmm. They're making money. Yeah, I see, I'm with the Black Effect. I see all of yeah. that. I'll be like, yo, you. Teach me. Yeah. Teach me. So I think <laughs> take me with you. <laughs> and that's what it was. At this time, this we were like. we're going to all these people's live shows. Mm -hmm. um, we're just on outside. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make ourselves be seen. So I think once we started doing the radio. Um, Scream had opened his own studio, so we changed studios because we were recording in her living room at mm -hmm. this point. So then we moved from her living room to an actual studio. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of had a little team, I guess, because at the time, Moran was like our audio guy working with us. Um, we started uploading the view, um, the episodes on DJ Scream's YouTube, so mm -hmm. that's when the views started going up. We had a photographer, a remember? Yeah, we had a photographer. We had an intern. Mm -hmm. Like, it was Aww, like, I, I like yeah. It. Okay. So this it was, was like, like the beginning stages of us building our team. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is before before the six month deadline. Yeah, because mm -hmm. so I was still working. Mm -hmm. I was still working, but 
I'm like, okay, we're we're we have a a plan, yeah. yeah. And we were able to get the intern because Kodak showed us how to like you know give credit to the school so mm-hmm. she could still you know come work for us technically. Mm-hmm. But we didn't have the money to pay her, but we okay. needed help. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So we were kind of learning like the loops of things. And at this point, we're still not making money, but we have a professional setup. You know, mm-hmm. it looks like a show. Mm-hmm. Now. Yeah, yeah. And you're starting we're not to really more in the floor. vision. You're yeah. starting like mm-hmm. now it's like your manifestation is like manifest even more right yeah. right higher speed so yeah where we, does poor minds take over right so once he told us to change the name we're like sitting down because and we're like brainstorming yeah and we were like we drink during the show like that's the main thing like we like to get turned mm. during the show so mm. we're like um drunk no drunk sounds too kind of trashy yeah. we're trying to think of a name that we keep in mind that can be marketable mm-hmm. so you know people don't feel like oh my god this is we're not putting drunk this on mm-hmm. our logo or mm-hmm. whatever so we were like um poor behavior poor decisions and we always open the episode with saying a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we were like what about poor minds because you know we pouring it up and we yeah. speaking what's on our mind because of the drink so we were like right i think we like it and that was the, actually one of the first ones we came up with we brainstormed for maybe 10 minutes about that name we did yeah. And it just stuck. And it was just, like, I think this the one. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just, at first I was like, and then we made the logo. So we finally had a logo. Mm-hmm. So it was just like starting to become an actual real podcast. Mm-hmm. So it was Scream like more of a, a mentor slash, or was it like a business, was he like a business partner? I would say, yeah, he was more like a mentor because mm-hmm. we weren't really business partners. Like we didn't really get into like business partnership until we started working with 85. Yeah. Okay. In 2019, about a year after that, we had been doing the uh, radio for a year. And that's when we oh yeah it. we had we so we were doing the radio for like a year and then we ended up carlos ended up reaching out to us and was saying that he would like come on poor minds so he pulled mm-hmm. hey. so he pulled up to my house and he recorded with me at the house and then that's kind of mm-hmm. what built the relationship that we had with them and then like you know after a year or so i guess he was like kind of watching what we were doing and he was like oh i want y'all to come up to the studio and come on 85 south and yeah. so we came up here we did that episode with them and maybe like three or four months after Chad and all of them wanted to sign us. Mm-hmm. It was like literally, he was like, finally, we, right. we're getting out the hood. Because we, <laughs> yeah, because literally, when you know, when we were still recording at our house when Carlos came on. Mm-hmm. So that year after, yeah, because that because it was before the DJ. It was screen. before the DJ okay. screen stuff. Carlos had recorded with us, but then it, you know, people started being like, okay, who are these girls? Mm-hmm. And then you know, we met Scream. Then we get into the studio. We're doing radio, and Carlos is like on the side, kind of like watching us. Like, dang, I see they still doing their thing. Mm-hmm. So he was like, okay, y'all come on eighty five. Mm-hmm. We went on eighty five. The episode goes crazy. Like yeah. it ends up getting. Got like, like a, a million, million views. views in a week. Yeah. Wow. So everybody was like, who are these girls? Mm-hmm. Like, it came out of nowhere. So mm-hmm. we ended up having a meeting with uh, Chad and Ryan about three months later. And that's when, like, the work started. Mm-hmm. So we end up moving into the studio with 85 at their mm-hmm. old studio at the time. Okay. And this is when the numbers started going up. Because okay. the production value just went through the roof. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they had a team already. Shout- Let me tell you, just... Pause for a second. Shout out to 85 South because I literally, I've been telling everybody, I can't even stop thinking about them. It's so hard to even go to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, We came here uh, like a year and a half ago during Black Effect Mm -hmm. Festival and we taped a couple episodes, but come back here. They built this whole set yes. and did all this work. And you're just like, it's kind of speechless. It's it's, it's nice. It's amazing. Yeah, it it's amazing experience. I, I like, I don't know the words to describe the level of happiness and mm-hmm. appreciation yeah. at the same time. But you like, to me, this is like love. Mm-hmm. But my love language is also service. So I'm yeah. like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, this, but like, this is a lot of service. Right. Yeah. You're like, you went above and beyond. I'm yeah. telling you, it's, <laughs> so. it's really, uh, oh, wait, I can't. I can't um, yeah, you guys respond. She was so Yo, thirsty. I was, yeah, I, was, I know. Was, this it don't matter. <laughs> that one is mine. No, well, this one's mine. I was oh. drinking out of this one, she but was, it don't matter. We be drinking out of Yeah, mm-hmm. it don't matter. But um, so yeah, I think like when we signed to eighty five, everything happened, mm-hmm. and it happened quickly. But a lot of times, people were introduced to us as eighty five being signed to eighty five, but they didn't realize at that point we had been putting in four years mm-hmm. of work mm-hmm. you know to get to the point to where we could sit on the car- couch with carlos mm-hmm. so when we met uh when we signed with 85 i was i quit my job a year later mm-hmm. wow because that's i want to know about that day. yeah uh, <laughs> were you like finally out bitches no no it was nice 
I was so I, happy because I was trying to convince her for years. Yeah, I like, they were all. Quit her job. I, I cried. Yeah. I didn't want to quit. My job actually made me quit. Yeah, um, I love those stories. Yeah, so for me, it was like I was struggling so long, eating a lot. Like I said, eating a lot mm -hmm. of rotel. <laughs> when I had moved to Atlanta, that was probably the brokest I have ever been in my entire life. Yeah. So from 2017 to 2021, it was a literal struggle for me. I would mm -hmm. literally have to put two paychecks together just to pay my rent. Mm -hmm. Like that's how it was yeah. for me. So whenever I was able to quit my job, I was at my job and I'm like, at this point, I'm only working two days a week mm -hmm. because I'm so busy with 85 stuff, poor mind mm -hmm. stuff. Are you going on the road too with them or are you just doing the taping? No, so at that time we had only just did the podcast like with them and then I think a few months later we got signed and then we just started recording at the studio. Yeah. We hadn't even started touring or anything. Yeah, we okay. hadn't started touring yet, but mm -hmm. like we were getting opportunities to go on other people's shows mm -hmm. or we would have an opportunity where someone was in town and we needed to record with them. So mm -hmm. I would have to episode, be off work. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was like, sometimes I would have to call in to work. Cause like at the end of the day, I'm not going to work and I'm missing out on opportunities. Yeah. Right. So I got my schedule down to two days a week and then my um, boss pulls me to the side and she's like, she's loving this for me, but the mm -hmm. people above her, they were not liking it. <laughs> Until this day, mm -hmm. side note, I used to be at work uploading Poor Minds episodes mm -hmm. at the time because before we started working with 85. Mm -hmm. I still think to this day I had left the login on because remember we were loading stuff You're on. You're funny. Our YouTube <laughs> no, got deleted. Doing it at our work. YouTube got deleted. And I think somebody either I worked with or somebody above me deleted, deleted our, our whole, YouTube. I mean, they deleted our whole, and we had to start over. So oh, it was like, luckily how, it was like. How are you not like. Did you guys cry during that whole thing? Um, we were really upset by it, but it was like in the beginning stages yeah. of our YouTube, okay. so we didn't yeah. have like a lot of content mm -hmm. uploading. That's yet. devastating. But it was just it so still crazy. Was, yeah. I still think to this day, somebody I was working with was like hating and being because they mm -hmm. used to tell me all the time, "You can't do this at work." But I'm like, "Look, I'm trying to hustle. I don't have a computer. Yeah. I gotta upload this content." So oh, you didn't even have a computer. I didn't have I a computer. Hustle, girl. I did not have a computer, <laughs> so I would go to work. I'm be like, "Drea, I'm about to get. I'm about to upload it. Just give me two. Give me a few seconds." So I'd be like, "At work." I'm deleting things. I'm trying to clear out the cookies and all that stuff. I right. Love this. So yeah. So I was at work. You and were my, clearing the cookies. Too? Yes. I'm clearing out everything. I'm deleting the history. Everything. Like I'm just clearing the computer out. Everything I do because I'm like I need this job, but I have to upload this content. Yeah. So, and she was in on it too. Yeah. yeah. Like she knew what I was She's doing. Like girl, get it. Don't yeah. worry. I know what was going on, and I was here for it. Because at the time too, I just had my own struggles and stuff going mm -hmm. on. Because my dad had got sick, and my dad actually ended up. Having passing away like a few weeks before we found out that we had to go on 85 mm -hmm. South. So I just had to like get it together yeah. and then we went on there and then a few months later we ended up, you know, like I said, getting signed, but life was just kind of hard. It was really... So it was like finally all of this hard work we've been putting in is paying off. Yeah. So like, yeah, I went out, like I said, when I was at work, my boss pulled me to the side. She was like, hey, look, basically the regional managers are like, you work in two days a week is not enough because you signed up to be full time mm -hmm. and you cannot be part time. So right. you're either going to have to be here five days a week or we're going to have to let you go. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was like, well, I, I'm just going to have to leave. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I, I just do not have the time. And I cried on the way home. Cause I was like, I don't have a job anymore. Yeah. And I was like, I really hope this, this takes work. I was like, yeah. mm -hmm. and but at this time we making money though. Like we're not making money we're like we are now. You're making we're enough like, to like survive, right? Yeah, yeah. like I can pay my rent. Mm -hmm. I, I had already paid my car off. So it's like, I can pay my insurance. I can pay my bills. Mm -hmm. So I was good. Yeah. I and just like that you, security yeah, blanket. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, yeah. of course. And it, it's hard to give up that security it blanket. Was, it is. It yeah. was for me. So, but it worked out. That was in 2021. So it's like, we in 2024 now. And we up. Hey, up hey. Still hey. like the Rotel though. Yeah. I still, still be like Rotel. Rotel. I still love me some Rotel though. <laughs> what is some of the like have you been out now that you're up like to a meal and you got the the the, the bill and been like, I got this, but what was that what was that high the expensive dish that you ate? I'm just curious. An expensive dish that I ate? That where you were like, okay. Cause That's I'm not gonna lie, we go out. We our be tabs up. be high, our tabs be high. <laughs> but are you paying for it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So but sometimes it, it we even... just pay the tab. Like I'll just be like, I got it, or she'll be like, I got it. Okay. It's because mm -hmm. you know, it, I guess it's crazy. Well, you because... guys have the. Do you do the company card? Be like, 
company. Yeah, I'll be saving my receipts. I'll be sending them to our uh, Let me tell you something. I have learned. So when I first got into business, I would save the receipts. Now that I don't know if before I just never knew this, but credit cards Mm -hmm. at the end of the year, they break everything down so freaking well Mm -hmm. that I'll keep my P&L. But then for backup, especially because me and my accountant, we have discussions. Mm-hmm. Before we press submit, <laughs> we got to agree on how much I'm paying. Yeah. If we don't agree, we got to reevaluate. <laughs> we got to go back to the <laughs> right. <laughs> we're, like, we're like, let me go. And like, even we just had this discussion. He called me. I was like on the phone with my friend. I said, shit, he calling me is never good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, what's going on? He was like, so we got to try and avoid this tax. So I'm trying to see how to get you over here. I'm like, wait, what? So anyways, so then I said to him, I said, you know what? It's all good. You know, I'm sure if I go back to my credit card receipts, I'll find something Something, that I bought that I just completely forgot about. Uh, And I love that about the credit card receipts because they just fucking itemize everything way better than the bank cards do. Mm -hmm. That's my go-to now, by the way. Yeah, so I think with us, it's like, it's just, it's a good feeling. Like It is. I never really celebrate my birthday. I've never Mm -hmm. been like a big birthday girl. So like last year was like the first time like I really celebrated my birthday with my friends Mm -hmm. and I like rented out a house in Miami for Mm -hmm. all of us. What? And it was just kind of mm-hmm. like a moment. I'm like, damn, like, this is what I'm doing for my birthday. On my 30th birthday, I got fired from another job that I had. Yep. And I walked to Drea's house and I was like, I remember she poured me a shot of Hennessy and I'm like, bro, what are we <laughs> going to do? I need a freaking job. Right. Only for me four years later to be like buying a nice house on the water, not buying, but renting a nice yeah, house on yeah, the water for, for my friends and like. You know, I love that for you. Yeah, though. it was a like long a long journey. A long well overdue. It's been a well long overdue. journey, but when I'm glad you, that we, you know, stuck it out. I'm when, still cheap though. <laughs> I'm very much still cheap though. Cheap or because yes. there's like I was telling someone I was talking to, I was like, there's two versions of cheap. There's uh-huh. like because one of my brothers, I'm gonna just say one of my older brother. He liked the type like when you go on a date with him. Like I promise you, I went. We was in our 20s. We met up at like McDonald's and he tried to split a value meal with his girl. I'm like, bro, oh, that's past no, see. cheap. No, yeah, that's, I'm not that's that bad. Past cheap. I was yeah. like, bro, just order whatever whatever you want. Let's just not do Or he'll go to the register and be like, the tax is 0.6 pipe. I'm like, yo, why are you doing this right yeah. now? And he'll quiz the person on what the tax rate is. I am now, that's cheap. Okay, now, is there or are you like more of frugal still a little bit. I think I'm still frugal especially when it comes to our business like mm-hmm. when we're on tour I'm the one that's like what what is this on the car what is this on mm-hmm. okay oh this is that's this good. much that's I'm, good. I'm comparing hotel I'm like I don't care because she, she look she's more bougie to me she's mm-hmm. like I'm not staying in this hotel and I'll be like okay so we're gonna stay in this hotel but let me look at these flights and see where I can move some money I around like to that. make it work so I'm definitely the one that's kind of more like I'm just cheap yeah, well, yeah, I'm not really that cheap. I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people. I don't mind paying anything for convenience. Yeah, like, and I don't mind delegating tasks to other people. Mm-hmm. Lex is also one of those people too, where it's like, even we in the beginning stages of the show, she used to like want to start over whenever we would be recording. She'll yeah. be like, "No, we got to start over," and I'll be like, "Why do we got to start over?" And she'll be like, "It's not that good," and I'll be like, "So we have to start over." And we done had like two glasses of wine, buddy, mm-hmm. and we a little tipsy, but we used to start over. But I feel like now that we're so deep in into the business, I realized the value of that because I think that's why we're so good at what we do and we can like do our show without ever having to edit it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we just know how to talk and we have like the chemistry and everything just flow. But yeah. And it complements the business to have that, um, to have that Mm -hmm. balance. Cause if both of y'all well, spenders, I don't know, a couple of years yeah. from now, it may be a problem, <laughs> but you gonna appreciate it. Oh, but see, the you thing know. about me, I'm not a cheap person, but I'm very good at like managing my money. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, and I think out of me and her, I'm the one who kind of keep up with the money more, like yeah. with how much money we making, where the checks at, when we getting this check, yeah. when we getting that check, making sure that the taxes is like put away and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm really good at money management, but I just like to like, you know, like I said, pay for convenience. I like that though. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm at. I, 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 I I struggle between frugal and like inconvenience, but yeah. the older I get, I'm like, you get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. And every time I go the cheap route, Jesus is, tries to teach me yep. a lesson. Every mm-hmm. time I'll be like, yo, I know I can do da da da. And I go the cheap route, I'm like, yo, you just lost a bunch yep. of money. Yep. At least. You learn that when you spend it now, uh-huh. you'd be like, it was worth it. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. sometimes you got to take that L, you know? I think it shows in our content as well, too, because I um, we were blessed enough to be able to, you know, we have a whole staff now, mm-hmm. you know, that's specifically for us. You know, mm-hmm. we have a bartender, we have videographers we pay, you know, mm-hmm. sound engineers that we pay. We have um, 
a social media manager, mm-hmm. but it shows in our content and mm-hmm. what we're pushing out because we, it couldn't be just me and Drea doing everything no, no, at that point. No. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give up hard. this part of my money because yeah. I need these people. Like, I can't, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to work these cameras. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. I don't know how to do no. that. Mm-hmm. So it was very important for us to make sure, you know, that we had people around us to make sure we elevate to that next level as well. Yeah. And fit that in the budget. And the cool thing about your story is at some point you knew the base level. Like, I don't think you should know everything, especially at this stage. But right. I think at least knowing the base level of upload a semi edit, yeah. a semi, <laughs> you know, whatever is is needed, especially when running a team, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. I think because we, you know, like I said, we both have our background in mass communications and I minored in broadcast journalism. Mm-hmm. So all that editing and stuff, I knew how to do that. Mm-hmm. I didn't like doing it, mm-hmm. but I knew what you know I wanted it. the show to look like. So whenever we see things on the show, it's very easy. Oh, add this in here, add that in here, because we do have that background. Mm-hmm. I thought it was gonna be too much meat, but it's actually. It's I'm, I'm mm-hmm. dying to eat, girl. Yes. I know. Yes. Come it's on, good. can we try this? Rotel dip. Rotel yes. dip. Rotel dip. Good. I'm excited. We got guac, sour cream, salsa. Do we yeah. just put the chips on our plates? So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do it either way. If you're a person who like likes the, the dip on top or you mm-hmm. like or it you on the did. side. Mm-hmm. So are you like a, a messy nacho person? I'm a messy nacho. A messy nacho person. Look, so I'm trying to stack my chips. Top. You gonna do your plates too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We gonna make yours first though. Mm-hmm. Okay. You gotta try it first. It looks so good. It looks so good. It's the perfect consistency. Put a lot of the goo. Okay, I got you. It's turkey. I'm safe. Yeah. (laughs) And oh, I don't know if we added that in there. She added a little milk to the cheese to kind of thin it out. Yeah, just to thin it out because it was a little thick. And then that, I think, with the pepper jack cheese too. Mm -hmm. Because pepper jack cheese doesn't melt as quick. That's That's good. good. She was going to load you up. I know. I'm like, wait, we got to add all these other You ain't saying nothing but a word. Yep, let me open that. Oh, I opened all of them, girl. Oh, you opened them already? She was ready. I was. The second I heard about this, I said, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm trying not me to a uh, mini plate. Okay. You know, we got to go to the gym in the morning. And Mr. Reg, you're going to be on us. Let me tell you, I haven't <laughs> been to the gym since I've been here. I'm really? Like, praying that it all bounces back afterwards. You'll be fine. Yeah. All, a I've few days. Is, all I've been eating is broke dishes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Every so meal. So what has been your favorite meal so far? I honestly think, uh, shout out to Tim Shantarangsu. He had this Thai ramen. Okay. Mm-hmm. I tried to make it a couple times at home. There's a couple of dishes really that I've made at home, like where I've like literally went home and was like, I gotta, I, I gotta, gotta try to recreate yeah. this. Yeah. So, um, there's a couple of ramens that were, I actually think I could rate the ramens at this point, but Cause there's been a lot of ramens, right? There's a lot of ramens, even though I try to ban it from the show every once in a while it's like okay yeah because i but i feel like that's what everybody does mm-hmm. run to you know like but i'm like if you're gonna do ramen what's your what's your twist right you gotta mm-hmm. be how something. you gonna make it different yeah. yeah and then the worst dish by far is always gonna be the pickled egg for me because it was the only dish i couldn't complete oh my god pickled egg pickled egg and i was like they, oh wow people was eat, doing it yeah yeah we had I this one so. girl she was like she had her dish and she was like nah you know i'm gonna switch it out i got a jar of pickled eggs in the car and i was like what's that and i was like sure girl we ain't never had that she brought it out and i was like i i looked at her i said i could for sure eat this i'm like i'm for sure could eat it i took a bite i was like damn this is this is this is hard you know and then i tried another bite and i by the end of me i was like look i'm gonna keep it real this is the dish i can't finish yeah oh my god and it was just one Hey, hey, yeah, I don't like stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really a fan of anything pickled with pickles. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't mind pickled things either, but it was the texture of the egg was like a rubber yeah, ball. Yeah, it's, it's real rubber. Day, the vinegar. Yeah. She destroyed, you know how you have that one bad experience, like, and then it destroys that ingredient for you? Mm-hmm. So, you can't eat eggs. Yeah, now the hard-boiled <laughs> egg to me is very hard for me to eat. And I used to love horrible eggs, but I just I can't really get through it, it because anymore. she she destroyed it for me. Okay, cheers. Okay. Cheers. This you dish ready? looks amazing. Here we go. All right. I'm ready to see her review. I'm nervous. Let's taste, taste. Uh-huh. And I used to be uh, nice about it, season one. But you know, and now I talk stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel bad because then I'll be like, I sound like Well, I like it. I don't know what she's going to say. <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh, okay. okay. I will say, though, Need some salsa. Mm-hmm. Do you so, like spicy? It's so cheesy mm-hmm. that either you're gonna drink a lot of water mm-hmm. or you have to add that extra salsa to mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. 
You want yep. some? Pass me some of that. Because the cheesy is so cheesy. Mm-hmm. It is. It's, I told you, it ain't real cheese, now. Nah. Let me tell you, though, I've had some good nachos on the show. Thank you. This, by far, is up there. Oh, oh thank so, you. Uh, have you heard of uh, Norm okay. Steele from Gangster Chronicles? Mm-mm, he no, does a really haven't. good uh, nachos, but this this one is going to go to the number one. Okay. Okay, yeah. number one, you know? I done took your spike. Took the mm-hmm. spike. Yeah, this is definitely, like, it's cheap, it's easy. It's quick. It's quick, and like I said, if you make a, like, if this was one person having this, this will definitely last you a very a long days. time. Yep. For sure, so the, all the college kids out there watching. The cream cheese, I'm just curious. Why did you add the cream cheese? Because I don't know if you could really taste it. Is it? I think... For me, when I add it, it's the it makes the consistency a little different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's more of a consistency thing for me. Yeah, for me it's a consistency thing. And then honestly, normally the way I typically do this dip is I put it in like a cast iron skillet and then I just put everything in there. Like I cut up all the cheese and stuff, the different cheeses. I'll cut up the onions, the jalapeno, put the cans of rotel and stuff in there, and then I'll just put it in the oven mm-hmm. and let so it, it bake. That, like, Mm-hmm. And then I mix it all together after mm-hmm. it's like melty. Mm-hmm. This dip is amazing. It's fantastic. Thank you. You guys are absolutely amazing. Easy to fall in love with. I can oh, see thank that. you. <laughs> it's very easy. Is there any advice, even though I just listening to you guys, I feel like there's so many golden nuggets, but is there any piece of advice you would give so another podcaster that's doing the whole partnership podcast? Mm. <sighs> I would just say that if it's something that you're really passionate about, because I think that that's the number one thing to me. Like, you have to do what you love. Mm-hmm. I think that's why a lot of the time when people start podcasts or start doing shows with people, they're doing it because they're trying to get money quickly mm-hmm. or they're doing mm-hmm. it because they see other people's success story, but it's not something that they really enjoy. I think one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that our show has become so successful is because we really enjoy mm-hmm. recording with each other and we really are friends in real life. And so I just think it's important to really enjoy what you do and then it doesn't feel like work. And mm-hmm. then when the money start coming, then that's a plus. Yeah. And you know, I always hate to say this cause I feel like it's so cliche, but you really have to stay consistent. Like even with the time that we weren't getting along and we didn't want to deal with each other we still showed up every week we still recorded we never missed a week and I think that that has added to the success too like you can't just show up when you want to Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I think for me just to kind of piggyback off what she said as far as like a money grab Mm -hmm. I think if you're doing it for a quick check or for a money grab it's not going to come for a very long time. Right. And I want to acknowledge the fact that you guys are almost at 300 episodes. Because I know we was walking in the hall. I was like, I'm almost at 100. You were like, go, girl, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> then I was like, how many you at? He was like, 300. I said, <laughs> <laughs> we almost at three. We are getting I was close. like, wait, 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 what? Yeah. <laughs> you said it like you were like cheering me on. But I was like, wait, wait, wait. You, okay, shit. But, yeah. but that's, I hear that's that awesome. 100 episodes That's a lot. Awesome. And Ooh. and I, just to, to finish the what I was saying, it's mm-hmm. like, the money grab is like, okay, so if you get in it and you do start making money, that still cannot be your motivation. Mm-hmm. And I think for us, the money, we know it's gonna come mm-hmm. and we know it's gonna be there. When people break up and having hard times with their co-hosts, 99% of the time it's about money or ego. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And a little bit of combination of both. Mm-hmm. So I feel like with money, we know it's gonna come. Mm-hmm. I'm not about to argue with her over no money. Right. Okay. It's not happening. I love that. If I have, if I do something wrong, I'm gonna apologize because mm-hmm. I don't have mm-hmm. an ego when it comes to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will literally get paid last if mm-hmm. I have to. If I got to make sure everybody else is paid. Right. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think. Take ego out of it and stop worrying about a check all the time. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you're going to have to do things that you don't get paid for. And the quality. How did I forget that? Focus on the quality. A lot of the time, people don't get to where they want to go because you're just putting out anything. Mm -hmm. I can honestly say that's what I was telling you earlier. It used to frustrate me in the beginning stages of us doing the show. And she would, like, in the middle of an episode, she'll be like, we need to start over because this wasn't good. But I'm glad that we did because... We not we didn't never put out just anything. We yeah. were always making sure it was good quality content. Like yeah. you guys weren't just punching the clock. Right. Even at your angry, right. you yeah. guys weren't doing that. Right. right. Yep. I love that your commitment to the overall goal really pushed y'all through because mm-hmm. you're in like a six month battle. And I know I talked to horrible decisions mm-hmm. separately. Mm-hmm. They've gone through their bouts mm-hmm. and I respect their hustles. But it's interesting that whenever I meet women that are working together, mm-hmm. how strong that actual commitment bond to mm-hmm. the relationship. Yeah. 
is really what carries them through. For sure. You know? Yeah. And I love that for y'all. Thank you for giving me the time out of your busy Thank schedule. You. This was fun. This was really fun. And feeding me and hopefully the whole crew because I know they starving and they want to <laughs> eat this. We got y'all. Everyone was hyped <laughs> about this dish. What was your original dish? It wasn't this. It was someone what else. Did what did we say? What did we say? Was oh, we said we was going to do Frito Pie. We did say Frito Pie, which is kind of similar. Well, no, I had that. I got introduced to that from uh, Lil Fish from B2K. It's like where you put chili, oh, the chili and the cheese. cheese and uh, uh-huh. But and I, make a re- I make a really good chili, though. So he probably didn't have you eat no, some he, good No, he chili. literally had... He said, or male chili. Oh, no, no, Oh, no, no she was no, going to make the no, chili. No, 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 no. I was going to make the chili, but yeah. I was like, okay. I'd be having to let my chili sit for a while, so it was going to be too long. Yeah. So I was like, let's just do the road tail. Okay, like, well, I'm glad you did the road tail, because yes. now you're number one. Thank yes. you. You're number yeah. one. I took the top <laughs> shot. <laughs> one. Don't play with me. <laughs> yes. Road tail champion. Yes. yes. And then where can everyone keep up with poor minds and everything Dre and Lex? So you can follow us on Instagram and on YouTube at poor, P-O-U-R underscore M-I-N-D-S. And you can listen to us on Spotify. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts. We're also on YouTube. Really on all of the streaming platforms. Episodes drop every Friday. Mm -hmm. So every Friday you can check us out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you guys record every week or do you do like... Like seasonal, like I'm oh, no. record for every, record every week. Ain't no season. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Every no week. Ain't no every week. Season. Ain't, Ain't no, no season. season. I want to. I want to. I want to get to that point. <laughs> we have, we're so guest heavy that yeah, we have I get to pre tape. No, yes. yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, that's understandable because we do a lot of solo, a lot of solo mm-hmm. content. So yeah. Yeah. I would. I would like. Man, I wish I could just talk to myself but <laughs> it ain't that fun i yeah. love hearing people's stories so right thank you, you so sharing. much thank you so all much right. this was so fun this was yep. fun all right y'all peace out bye y'all, bye, y'all. My plate. Mm. me too i'm like I'm oh i'm definitely finishing up. i'm definitely finishing no so good uh-uh. it is good